Cameron Jacobs. Cameron Jacobs. Cameron Jacobs. Cameron Jacobs is in Warren, where for some, that outpouring of support is creating a renewed sense of hope. Eric and Mimi, law enforcement got here early this morning to prepare to say goodbye to Trooper Jones Story. As the funeral wraps up behind me, you can still see the signs of support all around town. As you come through town, you see over, seems like a thousand American flags. A small town welcoming a large number of troopers and officers from all across the country to pay tribute to Trooper Brooke Jones Story. As you drive into Warren, the first few blocks show the amount of support the residents are giving to those who protect and serve. And it's overwhelming. For one local pastor, seeing this is a sense of security and hope in her community. The immediate response to any crisis is what can we do um, for people that they know or don't know just because they're from Warren, they're from, it's our, it's our town. Law enforcement agencies as far as Alaska have made their way to Warren High School for the funeral of Trooper Joan Story, the same place she graduated in 2003. The tight blue line these officers walk is sense of community all on its own. We've been watching as cars come into town to see how far they've actually traveled from, and it's, it's really heartwarming that people all over are pulling together for a loss in this community, especially one of theirs. High school principal Sean Teske said it took him no time at all to accept the responsibility to host the funeral. He said his students and staff made everything possible and is confident everyone leaving today will know Trooper Jones' story left a big impression on this small town. It's something we take pride of here throughout Warren is our sense of community and just showing visitors. I mean, we're having officers all around the nation come here. We want to you know, let them know the type of environment that Brooke uh, grew up in. A whole nation came together to celebrate the life of Trooper Brooke Jones' story and to relieve her of duty one last time. In Warren, I'm Cameron Jacobs. Cameron Jacobs spent the day with some of the survivors. He joins us with more. Mimi, I'm standing here in Fairdale where just four years ago a massive EF4 tornado destroyed the small community. If you are in Ashton, if you are in Rochelle Flag Center, there has been a confirmed tornado. This was the warning sent across the state line four years ago. That tornado turned out to be a massive EF4 that carved out a path of destruction for more than 30 miles. Gilbert Sabensti is a professional storm chaser and was out that night. He is one of the reasons meteorologists were able to send warnings to the public. It's literally been 30 years to this day that I've been out uh, chasing uh, tornadoes. And uh, Fairdale, I have to say, was probably one of the worst ones I had ever chased. The train spotter tells me he will never forget his first experience seeing the massive tornado. When I got past Malta on Route 38, I looked off to my northwest and I was just like, my goodness. The storm first touched down outside Ashton before moving its way northeast. In its path, the small family restaurant Grub Stakers. The storm destroyed the business, even trapping 12 people, including the owner, inside. I can never explain that. It's, it was weird and it was so fast, but it felt like it lasts forever. Despite all the damage, owner Ava Martoska told me she wasted no time to rebuild. On the same minute, I was, uh, yes, I was believing I can be back again. Yes, because I can't leave this community without this place. The owner of Grubstakers went on to tell me the restaurant will give away free pancakes on the anniversary every year as long as she's alive. In Fairdale, I'm Cameron Jacobs. All right, thanks, Cameron. Cameron Jacobs was in the courtroom. He joins us now live. Cameron, what happened today? Eric and Mimi, just a few minutes ago, the Scott Brady trial ended closing arguments. Today's main argument, how old was E.G. when she and Scott Brady started having sex? Scott Brady is facing one count of criminal sexual abuse and one count of criminal sexual assault. Brady sat quietly listening to the state bring up text messages about his hidden affair with a young student enrolled at North Boone. Not only did attorneys talk about the age of the student, but also the role Brady had in her life as a teacher or mentor. This is clear and uncontradicted evidence that at the time the defendant and the victim had sex, she was 17 years old and he was over 17 years of age. At no point did E period, G period say, yeah, I sought Mr. Brady out for mentoring in reference to my future, my schooling, help with my grades, tutoring, nothing at all. Judge Lowry decided to wait until next Friday afternoon for a ruling. As of right now, reporting in Rockford, I'm Cameron Jacobs, Eric and Mimi, back to you. Cameron, thanks for that live recap. Rockford police say they have the third and final suspect in custody for the November murder of a 37-year-old woman at a Sitco gas station. 
28-year-old Devontae Dotson was extradited back to Rockford Friday after being arrested in Georgia on a warrant related to the shooting. November 11th, Rockford police responded to the parking lot of the Sitco gas station and found Jennifer Jones suffering from a fatal gunshot wound. A 25-year-old man was also taken to the hospital. Dotson is now in the Winnebago County Jail on a $10 million bond. The UW Sports Factory in Rockford is playing host to sporting events for athletes with disabilities. Men and women athletes from 10 states showed up for a wheelchair rugby tournament. The sport is a combination of rugby, basketball, and handball. One athlete tells us aside from the full contact with the sport, the sense of community is what brings him back for more. It's a, a lot of people that live my life on a daily basis, um, and you just kind of get that community here that you can't get elsewhere. The tournament started on Friday and will wrap up on Sunday. The event is free for the public to attend. Local high school students hosted a senior prom for Wesley Willow's senior residence. This is the third year the students are hosting this themed event. This year's theme is 50s Diner. The residents enjoyed a dinner and got a chance to dance to swing and jazz music of the 50s. The president of the advisory council tells us why he looks forward to hosting this event every year. It's just such, uh, such so heartwarming that we get to be here and that we get to see everybody up and, and joyous and just the conversation that you have with the residents. I mean, there's so much wisdom in the room. It's really, it's really a great thing to be having. Day went on to say the advisory council is planning to keep this event going for years to come. Cameron Jacobs joins us in the studio. And Cameron, one person you talked to said people should have a plan to defend themselves at all times. That's right, Mimi. With the Harky arrest fresh on the minds of the viewers in the state line, we asked a Winnebago County training officer to give us some tips of what you can do to keep you and your family safe in a dangerous situation like this. Anything you can do to draw attention to them, you're better off. Being prepared is the most important message from Winnebago County Sheriff's Office Training Director Frank Ingardona. Knowing your surroundings, being loud, and being prepared to fight when your life is on the line. Getting into a car and going to a secondary location is never a good idea. So if you scream, loud, fight, do everything you can do to get away. Simple things like knowing where exits are and who you're standing around are key components of being prepared. Ingardona tells me people need to have a plan for every situation. Have a plan beforehand because nobody makes good decisions when you're scared or startled. Paying attention to people you're talking to on social media or in the public is something that could tell if the person you're talking to is safe. Good rule of thumb, Ingardona says, if something does not feel right, get out. You have to look for different clues in people, and we train police officers this, what to look for in people, um, and listen. Listen to what they're saying. Ingardona says people need to have real family discussions like you would if there was a fire or a tornado drill. We prepare people for the worst and we hope for the best. So why aren't we preparing each other for what humans can do? Ingardona also went on to tell me that being prepared is not living in fear. So have these conversations of what to do in every life-threatening situation is a good idea and never be afraid to ask for help. Mimi. Cameron, thanks for that report.